So hello everybody, this is the Waldo of Iridium Core. So this is the smallest device uh, from a series, a family of devices. The first one was a Quantum Mark I, then they also upgraded this to the Mark II, and then there is the Iridium Keyboard version and the Iridium Module, and now the smallest device, the Iridium Core. And Waldo sent this to me, and if you are a regular watcher, follower of my channel, you might have an idea why they did this. But in this video, I will look at the device itself and not what I will do with it. So this is really a powerhouse of sound synthesis. You have many, many different algorithms in there. You can do classic multi-sampling, analog emulations. You can do granular, some kind of FM, AM, additive synthesis. So everything is in there. But first, let's have a little look at the hardware. So it's a really posh and solid device. Everything's full metal. Also, the bottom of the device, the knobs feel really nice. The press ones could be a bit nicer. They're a bit wobbly, but still okay and do their job. And the touch display is helpful on the smaller device because you lose all the different knobs to do the editing, but actually it turns out it's really nice and it's more than enough what you have on this because you have the most used ones, the filter cut of the resonance, also the effect intensity and the volume are there on dedicated knobs. And then basically everything is here on these six knobs. So there's not much you need to do on the display. And it's actually pretty simple to use as well. You have a clear structure, you have your three oscillators, your filters, your envelopes, your modulation matrix, up to six LFOs and five effects, which you can also route in different ways. So it's a pretty logical layout. You simply go, for example, to an oscillator and then you have your six parameters and you can also press the buttons up there multiple times to go through the different tabs which we have here on such a screen. So it's not much a need to use the display at all. It's only for some menus you need to open with some specific functions when the touch display comes into play. Another feature I wanted to point out is that we can also do input. So we have also two audio inputs, so one stereo input, two monos, and this can also be used to feed in some audio and route it through the filters and effects. And since we have two layers, so you can basically play two sounds which you can split or layer. You can use, for example, a second layer to do some specific audio processing of a different synth or a groove box, and you can play a normal sound on the first layer. So what I did here is root in the black box here, which plays a drum groove. So let's first have a listen to that, but we need to turn down the volume for that. So that's the sound coming here from the device. But now I created a little patch for mangling the sound and I rooted it now to the layer one filter. And we need to have some input for that. There's also a function to latch here, the keyboard, so I don't have to press. So it's going through the two filters, which are set to bandpass. And then you can also mangle here the effects. We have here a drive, delay, reverb, whatever you can dream of. Let's have a look what's in there. As well, it's, it's tremolo, phaser, chorus, flanger, delay, reverb, equalizer, a drive, and a compressor. So basically everything you need in a synth. Let's look a bit more on the hardware side. So what can we do? We have different connectors. You have also a USB, so it could also connect a keyboard controller directly to the device or other kind of MIDI controller, but you can also uh, use it for the USB stick to import samples or presets. And then you can connect your computer, but the computer USB is only for MIDIs. And there's also a micro SD card slot, which you can also use for data. 
and then you have your MIDI in, out, also CV input and output. And yeah, I already talked about the stereo and then you have a headphone and that's basically it. Besides here, your normal controlling, there are also some pads, which I think a bit more on the gimmicky side. So I could have also done without them, but it's a little bit helpful to preview some sounds, but you have only eight button so it's not that much you can do with that what is more helpful i think is this macro control where you can assign different functions to these six buttons and if the macro is off you can have here some quick functions for latching here the notes as i already used chord functions arpeggiator and you can also go to the next and previous sound which is exactly pretty nice if you want to preview quickly different sounds you don't have to stay in the load dialogue you can simply navigate via these buttons so but i thought to give you an impression of what this device is capable of why not create a sound from scratch and to do so you go to the load dialogue you simply press on in it and then you have a pretty simple sine wave in it sound. So let's go to the first oscillator and you see we have up here the different sound generators. So we have the classic wavetable synthesis for which Waldorf is famous of. Then you have a waveform which are presets for different waveforms. So for example, you have here a big saw in there. So straightforward to jump, <laughs> sorry for that. Uh, which you could use and then there's also particle which is a multi-sample playback then resonator has some kind of resonance synthesis and under kernels there are hiding many more algorithms like fm am and so on there's also the x7 import feature where you can import full-blown DX7 patches and in this i want to look in a different video which is also quite something i'm curious about so, but let's start with a simple waveform. Yeah, let's keep that sound, but let's make a pad out of it. So first let's go here to the envelope and let's make uh, the release a bit longer. What is also nice that you see these animations where the note is actually playing. So this is pretty helpful actually to get an idea sometimes what your envelopes are doing, maybe a bit longer. Okay, that's nice. So then let's turn down the filter a bit. So the filters have many, many different variations. So we have 12 and 24 dB versions of all different ones. So we have low pass, high pass, as well as a band pass. And they all have three different versions and the normal sweet one, more saturated and the, and the really dirty, crunchy one. For the pad, let's go with a 12 dB. Yeah, let's just simply stay with that one and turn down the resonance. and turn down the cutoff. So the idea is now let's open the cutoff with the envelope. So let's go to the filter envelope and you see it's the other way around as we want it. So let's increase the attack and let's say we want some less decay but more sustain here. But we can change also the attack curve to exponential. Let's go with that, but let's turn down the amount a bit. That's already pretty nice, but let's add a reverb. Why not? Let's have a reverb of that. Let's crank it up. pretty nice and we are so far only using one oscillator so let's come up with a second one let's switch it on and this time why not go with kernels let's see what's hidden in there so here you have different templates so for example you have simple fm setup fm bells brass and also other things additive origins am and so on 
And let's go with a brass sound, why not? And let's first, so we can hear only that one on the oscillator page. There's also a mix page, so let's turn down the oscillator one and let's turn up oscillator two. And for that oscillator, we want to have it not going through this filter. We want to have it open all the time. Or well, let's see, apply it a little bit differently. So you can change here where it should go. The oscillator destination here is set to main, but you have many, many different options. For example, you can say you route it to go to this DF thingy. And if we go then to the filter again, you see the routing here. So the oscillator two is now directly routed to the DG former, the DF, which is currently off. So let's go there and do something with this it's currently on bypass. And as you see, the DF has also different options. You can have a drive gain and lots of different options as well as also filter. <laughs> Okay, and form and filters definitely only make fun if you use LFO. So let's do an LFO and we have six LFO. So let's just pick the first one, but we need to enter now the modulation matrix. And this is the most powerful thing in the whole device because you can have lots of different sources. So our source here is now the LFO one and let's pick here LFO one, for example, and we need to pick now the destination. Maybe it's DF amount or color. Let's check this out. Yes, it's the amount. You can also put this here on latch. Let's do it like this. And now let's mix in again the first oscillator here in the mix. You could also do some panning. missing a bit some heights, I think. Yeah, like that. Now we're talking. So with all these modulation options, oh, I forgot one of the craziest ones. There is also in the modulation matrix, there's also a complex modulator where you can do also very, very different envelopes of any kind and also assign them to the mod matrix, for example, as well to the filter or other things. And what I also did not mention so far is the sequencer. You can also modulate attributes with the sequencer. If you turn that on, you can say ARP and the ARP can also sequence parameters. So you have also parameters, where is it here? Where you can have up to eight parameters in the synthesizer, which you can modulate with a sequencer. So let's also check that out. Let's say we want to have a parameter and maybe add another effect. What can we have some crazy thing on there? Why not do some drive and make it really ugly and dirty? That's a pretty horrible one. Let's pick a two. Also not so nice. Let's go with a bit of 
crunch. No, let's let's stick with the tube. Oh, by the way, it was that wasn't that bad. <laughs> okay, but I think we can hear it better if we go with tube. Yeah, let's go with that one just for explanation and let's modulate here the amount. So let's turn down the amount. So it's gone. And now in a sequence, let's draw in some stuff. And for parameter one, we need to add a modulation target. So we simply click on add it automatically, add sequence of parameter one. And then we need to pick a destination. And that one is somewhere in effect at the bottom. And there should be drive amount. Here we are. So, and then you can say, what is the amount for the modulation? Okay, so you can turn it into a completely different sound just with a little bit of modulation from the sequencer. Ooh, this was already a long video. I think we leave it to that for the time being. And as I said, I want to look a little bit in the DX7 import and there is more to come from my side for this device in follow-up videos. And until next time, make some funky music.